returning to the city where her childhood and early youth passed was the last thing Tina wanted. For several minutes, she had been staring at the screen of her smartphone, where a tab with a social network was open. The youthful woman was rereading messages from her former neighbor Lena, with whom she usually exchanged congratulations on calendar holidays, and couldn't believe the meaning of the message. Tina, hi. Just found out this morning that your father passed away. The farewell will be on Wednesday. Stay strong. That's how the story filled with incredible resentment ended in four short sentences. Tina hadn't been in touch with her father for ten years, but she considered it somehow inhumane not to go bid farewell. She visited the intercity bus transport website and purchased a ticket. All that remained was to ask for time off from work, but Tina postponed explaining to her boss until the next morning. The night passed restlessly, and she hardly slept. She tried not to dwell on the past. Only thoughts stubbornly returned to that year when the millennium changed the life of their seemingly prosperous family. Tina and her parents, Anatoly and Ludmilla, joyfully celebrated the holiday. They were pleased that the recently purchased home computer successfully survived the issue that had been the subject of so many rumors. There were many jokes, delicious dishes, carefully prepared by the efforts of mother and daughter. Kind wishes, and colorful plans for the summer season. After Tina finished the ninth grade, they planned to go to the sea and then engage in country house affairs. The girl enthusiastically embraced her parents' idea and believed that the upcoming year would be the happiest. Battling insomnia, Tina made herself some tea. And with bitterness, she remembered her father's eyes shining when he looked at her mother, who had decided to sew matching outfits for everyone from the same fabric. Imagine, we're walking together, and it's immediately clear, a family is coming, Ludmilla dreamed. Tina enthusiastically embraced her mother's idea. Pushing the plates aside from the edge of the table. They began to flip through magazines, looking for the most beautiful styles. However, dreams were not meant to come true. At the end of January, when there were severe frosts, a tragedy occurred in the family. Ludmilla was found several blocks from home. According to the official version, the heart of the still young woman stopped. For 14 year old Tina, this was a terrible shock but she tried to comfort her father as best as she could. In memory of her mother, she tried to maintain relative order in the apartment. Fortunately, Ludmilla always involved her daughter in housekeeping. Anatoly tried to spend as little time at home as possible, and often the girls saw her father only early in the morning. And even then, not every day. Tina remembered vividly that pivotal moment when her father returned not alone. Even now, she would without hesitation name that date when the world of her happy childhood collapsed completely. It happened on the eve of the spring holiday. On March 7, contrary to his new habit, her father returned home in the evening. He was holding a bulky plaid bag, and along with him, a young woman who was expecting a child crossed the threshold of the tidy apartment. So, this is my daughter Tina, Anatoly said, feeling out of place. A smart girl, a beauty, a good housekeeper. Tina, despite her efforts to forget, remembered every detail of how a shy smile flickered on the stranger's face. Intuitively sensing an unpleasant continuation, the girl froze and heard, daughter, meet. This is Albina. She will now live with us. Her father tried to turn the awkward meeting into a simple exchange of pleasantries and suggested, well, shall we go to the kitchen? Let's get to know each other better. Only the frowning girl didn't rush to leave the corridor and asked a straightforward question, disregarding the rules of etiquette. And in what capacity will this woman live with us? Tina, don't be rude, it doesn't suit you. Albina has nowhere else to go, and people need help. Besides, you see, she's about to have a baby. She can't live on the street with it. Anger darkened the girl's eyes. How could you, Dad? Tina raged, not caring about the presence of a stranger woman and not sparing her words. You just said goodbye to your wife, my mother. Just recently, and already you're bringing her into our home. Clearly, it's not yesterday she got pregnant with that child. 
Oh, the balloon is going to burst any minute now. Tina, tears rolling down her cheeks, attempted to slap her father, but he skillfully intercepted her hand and calmly spoke, Don't be rude, you don't understand anything in life yet. You haven't figured out anything, but you've already started to be insolent. Anatoly turned to his companion and spoke in a calmer tone, Sorry about her, Albina. She's not a bad girl. Just hot-headed. It's okay, the woman replied. I understand her. I'm not upset at all. With great difficulty, Tina endured nearly two months of silence with her father. Anatoly tried to talk to her, but she slammed the door to her room and refused to communicate. She particularly ignored the unexpected guest, although Albina tried to spoil all the household members with delicious dishes. Now the girl was in no hurry to return home. After some thought, she decided to go to another city right after receiving her diploma, to her mother's cousin Anna, and in the meantime, she enrolled in accounting courses. Learning the intricacies of bookkeeping was boring, but Tina wasn't planning to burden her distant relative with useless baggage. She tried to earn as much money as possible. Walking dogs, doing cleaning, handing out flyers. She even took up posting advertisements. Whenever possible, she visited classmates and a peer neighbor who attended a gymnasium. She drank tea with them, ate kefir and cookies outside, but she didn't touch the shadow of the hated Albina. In early May, the woman was taken to the maternity ward. Tina hoped fervently that Albina wouldn't return, but a week later, Anatoly brought her back. In the woman's arms was a fancy, snow-white bundle tied with a blue ribbon. Hello, Tina, Albina greeted the girl. Look at what a cute little baby. You two will definitely become friends. You're an idiot. Tina shouted then. And your baby's an idiot too. It's a shame both of you didn't die. It would have been wonderful. What possessed my father to hatch this? The girl directed her anger towards her father. Do you think you can show up with puppies and I'll get better? I've had it up to here. Girl, what's gotten into you? Albina, handing the bundle to the bewildered Anatoly, tried to embrace the sobbing Tina. Please calm down. You don't really wish anything bad. It's just resentment talking. Cry it out, dear, don't hold back. Leave me alone, you idiot. Shaking off the woman's hand from her shoulder, Tina growled. And don't you dare touch me with your dirty hooves. Slamming the door. The girl retreated into her room, where, hugging the pillow, she wept, trying not to sob too loudly. In adulthood, Tina couldn't answer how she managed to overcome her hatred then, when the thought came to her to do something with the apartment. Maybe the anger evaporated when she saw her mother's photograph. Or maybe there really were no ill intentions in her heart. At that time, she gathered her school supplies, school uniform, some clothes, money from her piggy bank, and quietly left her home by morning. She was embarrassed to show up at school with her belongings and dragged them to the bus station's luggage room, deciding to bring them to where she would be allowed to stay for a few weeks. Fortunately, one of her classmates' parents were democratic enough and allowed her to stay temporarily in their apartment. They honestly warned the girl that they would inform Anatoly about her whereabouts, but Tina was grateful for this option. Her father tried to talk to her several times and waited for her near the school, but she always ran away as soon as she saw him. After receiving her diploma, Tina didn't even attend the graduation ceremony and set off on a journey far from her hometown. The future seemed like a constant struggle for means of existence, but Anna had no reason to complain about the young relative who appeared on her doorstep. Money was sometimes scarce, but the old lady insisted that the girl apply to school and complete her education in senior classes. Moreover, Aunt Anya, as Tina called her, often asked, Talk to your father, please, make peace with him, life is so short. No, I can't. He betrayed mom, traded her for who knows who. And anyway, I don't want to talk about it. The letters from her father, the girl tore into small shreds without reading, venting her anger on them. A night passed with unhappy memories. Tina managed to arrange a short leave without much effort. 
Having consumed a decent dose of sedatives before the trip, the woman dozed off almost the entire way without dreaming, which she was very grateful for. The hometown hadn't changed much in ten years. Tina was surprised to find pleasure in seeing familiar streets. Yet for some reason, she felt an overwhelming urge to cry. As she approached the entrance, she accidentally bumped into Lena coming out of the door, and after exchanging greetings, she went up to her family's apartment. It wasn't locked. The woman took off her shoes and walked into the living room to sit and bid farewell to her father. As if by cruel irony, Tina found herself sitting across from Albina and a boy, who was obviously her son, standing by her side with stoic indifference. People approached them, expressing condolences, not to her, Anatoly's eldest daughter. Some simply offered words of comfort. Some hugged Albina. Others awkwardly handed her money, disappearing instantly into the pockets of her black dress. Tina vaguely recognized some of the visitors, but due to the veil of tears clouding her vision, she couldn't be sure of her guesses. Suddenly, a woman approached Tina and handed her an envelope, whispering, open it when you're alone. The arriving people, after spending some time in the room, were replaced by others, and then Anatoly set off on his final journey. At the cafe where the wake was held, Tina ended up going with Albina, but neither woman dared to speak. Tina changed her mind about staying overnight in her hometown and immediately after the wake, she headed to the train station, just to get away from here as soon as possible, like ten years ago. Amidst the mournful bustle, the woman even forgot about the envelope handed to her. Without thinking, she tucked it into the pocket of her purse and only discovered it at the station, while purchasing her ticket. Sitting in the waiting area, Tina opened the envelope. Inside were money and a note from her father. My dear Tina, I'm so sorry how everything turned out in our lives. Please, don't tear up this letter. Let me finally explain things to you. Albina meant nothing to me when I brought her home. I found this distraught woman on a bench not far from where the tragedy with your mother happened. Albina was sitting there, hardly moving, as if she was in great distress. I don't know how to explain, but I felt obligated to save her. When you ran away, Albina wanted to leave our apartment, to get a job as a janitor for a tiny place to stay, but I forbid her. The boy was frail, he needed a mother nearby. My attachment to Albina and her child didn't happen right away. We got married only five years ago and fought my illness together. I wanted to come to you many times, but I didn't dare. Now I beg you to forgive me for not being able to reach you, and for all the time we lost. Please accept this money. It's a small part of what I would like to give you. I've always loved you, my daughter, and I've never forgotten. Your father. Tina cried, not hiding her tears. She reproached herself for her youthful idealism, then suddenly jumped up. Hailing a taxi, she gave her family's address. When Albina opened the door, Tina sincerely said, Forgive me, I was so foolish. Soon, the tearful women sat in the kitchen, and Tina realized that because of her own stubbornness, she had lost communication with her dear father, but now she had time to correct her mistake and support Albina, who had brightened her father's life. There's life. There's life.